I was in Michigan last March or so during the GOP primary there, and I was speaking with the Arab American leadership in that state, where of course they, I think it has the largest number of Arab Americans in the country, and they were saying that they're actually dissatisfied with both parties, Democrats and Republicans, for essentially after 9-11, sort of distancing themselves from America's Arab Americans. Are you hoping that however way we vote as a country tonight, leading into the results tomorrow, that how do you know that that relationship can actually change either way? We have to work on it. The relationship is not made overnight. And we know and we understand that uh, the image uh, of Arab Americans and Islam has suffered um, a serious blow after 9-11 because of the uh, terrorist attacks uh, by some who claim to, to do it, uh, you know, in our name. So it really uh, hurt us. It hurt us as Americans because we were affected by 9-11. And also it hurt us because we, we are Muslim. And today, uh, many people, many movements and organizations continue to point a collective sense of guilt and finger against American Muslims. There are, you know, a few members of Congress who question the loyalty of American Muslims. They conduct hearings. Uh, millions of dollars are being spent uh, to misinform the public about American Muslims, about Islam. So American Muslims are, are you know, trying to take their, tab uh, their, their seat at the table they are organizing. Uh, I noticed that uh, this year um, millions of dollars are being spent by American Muslims and Arab Americans to choose the right candidate, whether on the national level or at the district level. What's interesting is that with a, place, a, a race so close as this one, uh, I've been hearing reports that immigrants, whether Asian Americans or East Asian Americans in Virginia, Persian Americans in Virginia, in certain critical swing states could make the difference either way if they were to mobilize as one block. But that's not really the case with Arab Americans. Are they all mobilizing or voting essentially as one block, or is it very varied? We, uh, uh, I talk about uh, American Muslims, and part of them is also Arab Americans. The recent survey that CARE conducted uh, and was released uh, about a week ago, uh, shows that American Muslims are really engaged, and American Muslims uh, are uh, present in the, in the uh, uh, swing states, in, in Florida, in Ohio, in Virginia, uh, in Iowa. All these states um, are, are, are important now, and every, everyone is watching how voters are there, but also they're looking at the votes of the minority. Uh, President Obama, Mitt Romney, and everyone uh, think and believe that the one who will swing the votes are the minority votes. And American Muslims, we have about 1.1 million registered uh, voters. Um, of course, they have they have a passion about certain issues, and these issues are common with uh, immigrant communities who care about immigration, who care about jobs, and also they care about education and they care about national security. I believe that American Muslims can decide who will be the next president of the United States because of their votes. 91% of the registered Muslim voters intend to vote today. And that really makes them among the highest groups in our society who are registered to vote, to vote and are planning to vote. That's interesting. Compared to uh, only about 70%, for example, of Persian Americans who can right. vote and then go on to actually do vote. What, do you, what does your community tell you is at stake for them? I know your organization is nonpartisan, but what are your membership telling you at the ground level in terms of what's at stake for them between either candidate tomorrow? Well, at stake, like, like all Americans who care about the economy, uh, the jobs, the, the unemployment uh, rate, uh, social security, health care, education, uh, civil liberties, uh, and the relations with the Muslim world. Uh, we're looking for uh, a leadership that either will continue or will open a new page with the American Muslim community. We're dissatisfied with the lack of progress on civil liberties in the United States. Uh, and we believe if Barack Obama wins another term, we hope that he will re-energize the bases and he will re-engage American Muslims uh, in a positive and constructive way, much better than the past five years or even the, the 12 years, uh, almost since 9-11. If Mitt Romney wins, we want him also to take care of civil liberties, protect religious freedom. He's a minority as well. And also 
think about the Muslim world as a partner, not to think of the Muslim world as a potential threat or uh, opponent to the United States. Muslims here and abroad uh, love this country and they would like to turn a new leaf based on mutual understanding and mutual respect.